This is the second video addressing the topic of factorial design. In the first video, I gave an introduction to factorial design uh, using PowerPoint slides. And now I want to make sure that we really understand what this is and how it works and how to estimate it. So I've opened up a blank Excel file. And the very simplest design we can begin with is going to be one factor at two levels. So I'm going to uh, denote this design by saying F1 for the one factor, and I'll go ahead and put an underline underneath that. There's the bottom border. And now this factor can take on two levels, a high level and a low level. And I'm going to code those with a minus one for the low level and a plus one for the high level. And this coding is going to be very important in what we uh, do later, and in particular in our calculation of interactions and in our estimation. So in this very simple experiment, there are only two levels. But let's talk through exactly what we would do if we were to run this experiment. Firstly, we wouldn't just be running the experiment twice, once high and once low we would be running it for some number of replicates. So let's suppose that the number of replicates is going to be four. So I'm now going to begin to actually design the experiment. So this is one factor at two levels. So I'm going to have my factor and I want to do four replicates. Well, that means I'm going to have to run the experiment four times at the low level and then four times at the high level. And the easiest way for me to um, move that over here is just to copy the minus one and the plus one and then just paste it four times. And uh, it's very important in doing this experiment that I randomize the order in which I run the experiment. So to do that, I'm going to select the cell uh, to the right of the first factor level here. And I'm going to put a uniform random number in this cell by using the function rand. So it's equals rand. And there's a uniform number. And I'm now going to copy that number all the way down next to um, the factor levels. Now if I take this block and sort it, so go to the data tab, and then to sort, by the random numbers. So I'm going to sort this entire stack by column H, which is where the random numbers are. I will get a random ordering of the factor levels. So in this particular case, the random ordering came out um, the first time I run it, it's high. Then I'm going to run it low four times in a row. And then I'm going to run it uh, high three more times. Now, this is truly a random selection. Uh, it just so happens that the one we, we got doesn't look all that random. But it's very important that I do the randomization and stick with the results. Now that I've done the randomization, I can delete the uniform random numbers. I don't need those anymore. So finally, I'm ready to run the experiment. I'm going to run the experiment by setting the factor. You might think it's temperature or something like that. I set it to the high level on the first run, the low level on the next four runs, and the high level on the last three runs. And when I run the experiment, I'm going to get a y value for each of those runs. I don't have the y values when I begin, when I'm designing the experiment, or when I'm randomizing it. It's not till I actually go out and run the experiment. So let's assume that I'm now running the experiment and I get my y values. And let's suppose that the first y value is 8, and the next y value is going to be 5, and then 8, and then 6, and then 6, and then 9, and 7, and finally 8. So these numbers represent the outcome of the random experiment that I ran. Now I'm going to analyze this experiment to see if there is a significant difference between the high and low levels by using regression. And basically to do this, I'm just going to regress y on the first factor. 
So I go to the Data Analysis tab and I go to Data Analysis and then select Regression and I need to input my um, Y range so I'm going to select the, the Y column including the label and then I'm going to select my X range So my X range is down here next to the Y range. Oops, I forgot the label. Go ahead and get the label. There it is. And now I do want to check the box that says there are labels. And I want to output the output here in this spreadsheet. So I've checked the output range. Now I actually need to tell it where. Let's go ahead and put it right there. And that should do it. So I'll run the regression. And here is my regression summary. Um, what I find is that the main effect for um, F1, factor 1, is 0.875. And its p-value came out at 0.058. So it's right on the edge of being statistically significant at the 5% level. So this is saying that we're finding pretty strong statistical evidence that there is an effect or a difference between the low and the high level of this factor. Uh, that difference is 0.075. So when you're at the high level of the, the factor, I misspoke, when you're at the high level of the factor, uh, you are going to be 0 0.875 above the grand mean, which is 7.125. And when you're at the low level, on average, you're going to be uh, minus 0 0.875. Okay, so I've shown you how to do uh, the analysis of this very simple experiment that has just one factor. Now to make absolutely clear what we're going to be doing here, we're now going to look at another experiment. And in this experiment, we're going to have two factors, F1 and F2. And the way we're going to get the experimental design in the second case is to take the factor values from the first case and repeat them twice. So there's the first time and here's the second time. Now, the first time we run the experiment, we're going to set the second factor to its low level. And then the next time, uh, uh, the next two times we run the experiment, following what factor one says, we're going to set factor two to the high level. Okay, so this is basically an algorithm that we can use here to create these experimental designs when we have more and more factors. Uh, what we're going to do is copy the previous design twice and then run the entire previous design uh, with the new factor set at the low level and then run it all again with the new factor set at the high level. So this is going to be our basic uh, experimental design. This is a 2 to the 2 factorial design. So let me go ahead and put that in as a lab label. A 2 to the 2 factorial design. Now, um, what happens if we have replicates? Okay, so this is going to be our designed experiment. And it's going to be a 2 to the 2 factorial with well, let's say that we have uh, three replicates. So we're going to have a Y, and now we have two factors, F1 and F2. Now, if we have three replicates, then we have to run this entire design three times. So I'm just going to copy it down three times. And then once again, I want to run the experiment in a random order, so I need to randomize the order. 
So I'm going to randomize as I did before by putting uniform random numbers in next to my uh, two factors. So that's rand. And then copying those. And then finally I actually get the random order by sorting this block using the random numbers that I generated as the index for the sort. So I'm going to sort. And I'm going to sort the column, the block by. You need to be able to read the column names here. So it's going to be column I. Click OK. And so I now have a random ordering of the uh, levels of the two factors. So the first time I run the experiment, I'm going to run it set with both factor 1 and factor 2 low. That's this right here. And then the next time I run the experiment, I'm going to run it with factor 1 set to the high level and factor 2 set to the low level and so on. And I'm just going to go ahead and follow this random ordering that I created. Now again, when I design the experiment, I don't have the y values uh, yet. Uh, when I design it and when I do the randomization, it's not until I actually run the experiment that I'm going to get the y values. So let's suppose that I run the experiment and I get the following uh, y values. I get 4, 6, 5, 7, 3, 6, 8, 9, 10, 8, 7, and 8. Those happen to be the values that, that I get when I actually run my experiment. Well now I'm going to analyze this using regression as well. But there's a new wrinkle and this is the idea of an interaction. And the interaction is, uh, is a third column that you need to run in the regression. So this is the F1 times F2 interaction. And this column is created by multiplying the two previous columns. So it's going to be F1 times F2. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this all the way down. So now I'm in a position to run my regression. Namely, I'm going to regress y on this entire block that gives me factor 1's levels, factor 2's level, and then the interaction. Now it's customary, incidentally, to uh, indicate this interaction in the design. So I'll just go ahead and do it. But it's important to understand that the only values that you're actually going to use when you do the experiment are the ones under the two factors. These are the, the factor levels, and they are dictating what levels you set the um, factors for factor 1 and factor 2 when you run the experiment. This third column that shows you the interaction is uh, is uh, synthesized in a sense, it's constructed in order to estimate the interaction. So now going back to my experiment here, I can actually analyze it now using regression. So I'm going to go to data and then to data analysis and it has regression already selected so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now I need to put in my new Y values. So this is a 2 to the 2 factorial design with three replicates and uh, I want my label as well. I've got to do it again. So these are my y values. Now I'm going to do my x values and for my x values I get all three columns, the columns corresponding to each of the factors together with the column corresponding to the interaction. So there they are. Oh, and once again, I'm forgetting to get the labels. I do want the labels. There we go. And I've got the label box checked. I have an output range. That's good. So let me select in the output range box. And 
tell it to write the results of this regression right here. So now I can interpret the results and I'm going to do that by looking at the uh, coefficients together with their p-values. And what you can see here is that factor 1 has a significant main effect of 1.25. Factor 2 has a significant, slightly less significant, it's significant at the 2% level instead of the 1% level, but factor 2 is also significant and positive. And then finally the factor 1 and factor 2 interactions uh, is not significant. Okay, I'm going to conclude this video at this point. Uh, I've illustrated uh, what I mean by a factorial experiment and in particular illustrated what um, I do to get replicates, okay, which is namely to take the, the experimental design that you've created and uh, and copy the block indicating the factors levels, uh, the number of times that you need the replicates. Then you create a random order, you run your experiment, and then you can very easily analyze this experiment using regression. In part three of this series, uh, I will generate um, the designs for um, two to the p factorial experiments uh, uh, at levels 3 and 4 and, and perhaps beyond.